turns out probably he was selling was lube, but we won't go there. Let's get back to the phones. Uh, let's go to Bill calling in from Bakersfield, California, on line three, KERN. Kern, welcome, Bill, to the Savage Nation. Hey. Uh, you know, this promotion of Islam is very distressing by the guy in the White House, the resident there. Uh, if you look in the news, you know, people talk about how they hate Americans and hate our freedom and all this stuff. But they hate everything, apparently, because they're killing people all over the world. I mean, you have the Boko Haram in Africa. you got the Somalis next to Kenya there. you got all the infighting in Iraq and Syria. And then the latest thing I'm seeing here now is that ISIS is now threatening to seize the Libyan oil refineries. When they go back to, you know, how they had the little uprising there, supported by Obama and Hillary you know, they say U.S. back. Well, that's Obama and Hillary. Right. And that was, uh, became Obama's JV team that turned into ISIS. That JV uh, team's pretty good, huh? Well, the thing is, is that they've been promoting this stuff themselves uh, behind the scenes. I mean, that's why I think they, they, they let their ambassador get knocked off there in Libya, along with the rest of the Americans, where they literally turned their backs on them. They had people ready to go in there and save them and then they gave us all this baloney about everything else but the thing is is that islam cannot coexist with freedom in america it just if they follow their own religion and sharia law there's no way that islam can coexist in america as americans because america was founded on judeo-christian ethics now none of the presidents that i know of promoted christianity necessarily but Jefferson actually did get a copy of the Koran so he could find out what kind of nut jobs these people are in their own book. Yeah, that's, that's what, why uh, that that's what he was citing today. But yeah, no, Bill, listen, I I I hear the angst in your voice. I I, I hear the frustration, and, and thanks for your call. And and what what Bill's feeling? What I'm feeling? Bill's feeling what a lot of uh, millions of Americans, the silent majority, the Trump followers are feeling is. You know, stop labeling us, okay? Stop saying we're this. Stop saying we're that. We're bigots. We're racist. We're home, we're Islamophobic. We're stupid. We don't understand. Uh, he just said Islam cannot cannot uh, you know coexist in in America. But uh, I'm paraphrasing what he said. No, it cannot exist anywhere with anything else. It's Islam or die, or Islam or be dead. A radical Islam. That is what it pushes. Andrew, on WABC in my original hometown of New York, welcome to the Savage Nation. Excellent call. Uh, speaking of crazy books, uh, Obama's book, Dreams of My Father, you'll learn about him, and a great book, uh, Immigrants and Epidemics by Dr. Savage, we should all check out. But I want to ask uh, adjunct assistant Professor Obama, if the Muslim religion is part of the founding why aren't there any uh, historical mosques like you see historical churches 150 200 years old and this is um who obama is he's in his element his anti-american far leftist promoting muhammad ali is promoting a racist he chose right. to go to and a draft dodger right he chose to go to all black church when there were people not all the white asians and spanish people were racist against blacks he knew that and white privilege, which Obama and they preach, well, black privilege. Obama, in his book, he got into Harvard and those Ivy League schools, but he wrote he was so stoned and drugged out his senior year in high school, he doesn't even remember it. And when he went to Harvard, he became the law review professor, I mean, uh, writer, head of that. Yet he wrote he didn't really go to class. Instead, he got stoned and went to the communist meeting. Right. Now listen, Andrew. Andrew, uh, the previous caller, Bill, just mentioned uh, dream, you know, Obama's book, "Dreams of My Father." He dreams of his father because they only met him twice, and once he doesn't even remember. So, what is he writing about? His whole life has been a blueprint to get to where he is now, and and it's all uh, and it's all a farce. Uh, and going right back to him saying, you know, back in June of two thousand eight, I think it was June twenty ninth of two thousand and eight, they they're going to try to scare you and and tell you that I'm black. Well. You're not. 
you're biracial. You're 50% white and you're 50% black. Okay, I've got liberal friends who say to me, you just say that because you don't want to take orders from a black man. No, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. It has to do with he's 50% white, his mother was 100% white, flaky, hippy, dippy that she was, and his father was 100% black. And there goes your story. So I like to joke when people say I'm a racist, I say against Obama, I go, well, am I racist against white people or black people? <laughs> Because he's both. But, Andrew, thanks for your call. I do appreciate it. I'll tell you, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, Ronald, Dave, Tom, and others, do not go away. You are listening to The Savage Nation, the home of borders, language, and culture. And now, Diseases Without Borders, the latest email book by Dr. Savage. Tune in tomorrow. You're going to hear a lot about that and how it pertains to the Zika virus, which now, healthcare emergency in the state of Florida. We warned you. Got to be careful. Keep it here at The Savage Nation. Welcome back. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage, who will return tomorrow. Make sure you go to michaelsavage.com and pre-order Diseases Without Borders. Uh, I'm telling you, you'll be prepared when it comes, so we won't have to tell you I told you so, the Zika virus. And uh, Dr. Savage will be talking in great depth about that tomorrow. Remember, he's got his Ph.D. in epidemiology, nutrition, and sciences uh, from the University of California at Berkeley. So he's, in, he's, gonna, he's an expert on, on this type of stuff, and unlike the talking heads on TV. Um, before we get back to your phone calls, uh, there was just, you know, there's a lot going on out there in the world aside uh, from the election, which, by the way, don't get me wrong, I find it riveting. I don't think it, it's a bad thing. I mean, just the fact that John Kasich has done 91 town halls in New Hampshire alone is fascinating. Follow the money. You know, the, the media not, not uh, refusing to acknowledge Hillary Clinton's emails, the top secret sensitive emails there that are basically, as one intelligence officer said, a death sentence. That's a quote. It's a death sentence for those names if they should get out there. Uh, but we do have um, two generals who say that women should register for the draft. Two, two senior military leaders had said just yesterday that women should be required to register for the draft now that the Pentagon has opened all combat roles to them. I find this fascinating. I remember when I turned 18, I had to register for the draft. It's the law. You go to the post office, you fill out the form, and boom, you're registered for the draft. The thing I find weird about it is there is no draft. So what are you registering for? I understand it's for down the road should they, there be an emergency, national security emergency. You implement the draft. You have a, a database to go to. But everybody knows the draft isn't coming back, especially in this politically correct society that we live in. They call the draft some type of um, you know disenfranchisement of, of everybody. They would say, uh, oh, they're drafting more blacks, they're drafting more Hispanics, then white privilege, you don't get drafted. Trust me, many people from all races, all religions have been drafted and have given their lives so liberals can run around this country with their stupid rules for us, not stupid rules for them, and their political correctness. Remember, as I always say, political correctness is domestic terrorism. But I just I found it interesting. You have um, draft has not been used since the Vietnam War. I think it went away around 1975, and uh, this would represent another shift in the military's uh, shift towards viewing men and women as equals. Now, women want to be equal, guys. You know this. Well, until they got to go to combat or until the check comes. <laughs> I've yet to have a woman hold the door for me. Although um, I am very chivalrous. I, uh, I grew up with uh, three sisters, and I attended an all-girls Catholic school. So I understand um, being nice to women, but I've yet to have a woman hold the door for me. Let's get back to the phones. Uh, let's check in uh, line 6, KBET in Las Vegas. Ronald, I appreciate your patience. Thank you for holding. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. Thomas Jefferson, when he mentioned the uh, Mohammedans um, in the bill establishing religious freedom, January 16, 1786, mm -hmm. slavery was legal and lawful in the United States of America. And so it was, a, it was, it was necessary to include that in the document. Now, once the Congress, once our government outlawed slavery, then it needs a different kind of a review. All those religions and teachings that do not accept that slavery is not acceptable within the jurisdiction of the United States of America and still come here 
to encourage and promote slavery by whatever name you want to call it. Now, when the Mohammedans renounce slavery, then they will be in harmony with our Constitution as it now stands. Do you agree? We say that last part again. When Mohammedans, when their religious sects, renounce slavery as an acceptable part of their lifestyle, then they will be compatible with the Constitution as it now stands, where slavery is not lawful. That's only, that's only one part of it, Ronald. They have a lot more to renounce aside uh, just from, from slavery. They've, they've got a ton of things. The abuse of women uh, is at the top of the list there. Honor killings is another one. Murder is still illegal. You're listening to Loop 8 here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. I think it could have been the debate. I think some people were disappointed that I didn't go in the debate. If I had it to do again, I would have done the exact same thing. And the reason is, do you know why? Because I raised $6 million for the vets in one hour. So if I took a second place instead of a first place and could give the vets $6 million, I'll do that all day long. Ah, there you go. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. That's the Donald Trump we know. That's the Donald Trump, candidate Trump, uh, that we love. Uh, that was the one he came. I mean, coming back stronger than ever again, calling Cruz a fraud, calling, saying he stole the election. He he had, you know, he, he had said earlier, it was, it was in the New York Post, that he... Thinks maybe not going to the to the to the debate was a mistake, but then he came back. He came back and realized, hey, I, I, you know, call it spin, call it honesty. Either way, the vets are six million dollars richer, while Ob- the Obama administration is trying to give away money that could be going to the vets to illegals that are coming in here, to uh, radical Muslims that are coming in here trying to kill us. This is the type of stuff that will resonate with people. Welcome, folks. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. As we head towards the home stretch, I stress Dr. Savage will be back tomorrow. You are definitely not going to want to miss the show. He's going to be talking about the Zika virus and how... Um, well, and how it, it, it's going to get worse and how you can prevent yourself from getting it. We'll also be talking, get your copy at michaelsavage.com, Diseases Without Borders, Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases from the Flu and the Measles to Tuberculosis. And again, Dr. Savage is the only one, the only talk show host of the nation who has a Ph.D. in Epidemiology and Nutrition and Sciences from the University of California at Berkeley. Need I say more? Be here or be square. Um Playing that from Donald Trump, I do like it. I like that he's got his passion back. I would like that he didn't succumb to the snarky Hollywood types. I like that he didn't succumb to the media saying, oh, it's over, and this, that, and the other thing. He has three more events planned this week. They're going to be in, in big arenas. The only thing, I mean, that's fine. If you could attract ten or 20,000 people, more power to you. Who am I to say? I do wish, though, he'd go to a coffee shop or two. It would be nice if he went to a coffee shop, shook hands with a few people. People like that stuff. People like the, to see you right there and then. It, it goes a long way. But heh, who can argue it? So far, so far, he's doing great. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Um, line 7, the great WJR. Dave, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm, I'm angry about Zika and Obama. Basically, I think Obama needs, needs to protect us. He needs to, uh, or we need to have some national policy where he he gets up and says, if you're coming from a certain country into the United States as a tourist, whatever, you you need to have a blood test with you. Otherwise, we're sending you back. Because this is, it's moved up into the possibility of a pandemic now that it's sexually transmitted. And once, it, once it moves into STD territory. But, I, Dave, I'll tell you what. Let's take it one step further and digress back to Dr. Savage's show from the other day, which you can find, by the way, on michaelsavage.com, where he called, not for a blood test, as you do, the banning of all people coming in from Zika-infested nations. 
I mean, I, and, I, and I agree with that. I think that would be a great plan. That that would definitely come. But Obama would never do that. They'd call it prejudice. They'd call it racist. They'd call it discriminatory. They'd call it disenfranchisement. So while while your plan's pretty cool, I like the more radical approach. It's safer to do what Dr. Savage wanted to do, which is just stop them all from coming. This, this, this Zika virus has been found in your nation. Yeah, come back another day. Check back with us when you get it under control. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's... 